Hi, welcome to another episode of CC Top Solutions. I hope everybody had a great New Year's Eve. I know I did. Now we're back to work on Touchdown Bundy. We're gonna be replacing the CAD system, which is the axle lock mechanism. It used to be vacuum operated. I don't like vacuum operated anything. We're switching it to a cable actuated system using an aftermarket kit. We're gonna walk you through how to do that. And then we're also gonna look at that exhaust leak we have and possibly install a thermostat. Cause right now this thing runs at about 160 degrees. Just not warm enough for the engine to really cook all the moisture out of the oil. I hope you enjoy the episode. I'm gonna have a lot of fun filming it. This is the original vacuum operating system that we're gonna be replacing. You can see we've got our, our plug right here. That just sends a signal up to the dashboard so that you know, it'll show four wheel drive engaged, disengaged. Uh, really, it doesn't mean four wheel drive is engaged and disengaged, it just means the front hub is disengaged. And here's your diaphragm. This used to be run off of a vacuum switch on the transfer case. And when you would put it in four wheel drive, it would apply vacuum one way or another to lock and dis, to engage and disengage this axle system. We are going to unbolt all of this and replace it with a cable driven system. We're doing this strictly by the instructions, which by the way, I had to download. Step one, relocate our hood release cable. It's gonna go three quarters of an inch towards the passenger side. We have relocated it. We ended up just reusing the exact same original mounting holes. You can see right here, originally used these four holes. I just moved it over and used these two and that seemed okay to me. The next step is to mount this bracket that is supplied in the kit using a quarter 20 self tapper, which I ended up upgrading. I wanted a bigger self tapper. I'm supposed to mount it right here so that it's next to the hood latch. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and dr drill that in, but if something happens and I don't like it, I might move it. You know, I think I want it back a little further, like back here. The reason why is because this truck is so lifted, I'm concerned the cable may not be long enough. So the, the further back I can make it, the better. Next step is to cut a two inch hole, about two inches above the hole for our existing hood latch cable. So it would be up here. We gotta cut the hole in our insulation. Speaking of cutting holes, what's everybody's preferred tool for cutting? Personally, I love these electrician scissors. They work great. go. There's our nice two by two hole about two inches above the existing. And now we will begin the drilling. We're supposed to drill an 11 16 inch hole here. I'm going to start with a pilot bit because I don't want this drill to walk. Also before drilling I did take a look outside in the uh, engine side of the firewall and there is nothing there that we need to worry about drilling through. Now we're gonna step it up a bit. We're gonna go with our 11 sixteenths. We're gonna step it up a drill bit. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Now we're gonna install our cable. And the way we have to do that, we take this nut and washer off. And then we slide the whole cable assembly through here, through here, through here, put the nut and washer back on, and then through here. That's a key step. So we go through here like that. And then we put the nut and washer through like this. Okay, you'll have to go out firewall like that. Uh, also note, I have the battery disconnected so that this cable doesn't inadvertently touch anything it shouldn't and short out. So check this out. This actually does not work the way it came. So I should be able to slide these threads right through here, but no, this <laughs> bracket's not drilled far enough for that. So uh, I'm gonna have to take this back out, open up this hole a little bit, and then bring it through. 
We've removed our, our old mechanism. Here it is. You can see our vacuum actuator right here. And all it would do is just slide this back and forth to lock and unlock the front hubs. Very, very easy. And then this is just the switch. So on the new setup, it gets reversed. The cable will go in right here and it'll be connected like here. And as you move the cable, it'll just slide that fork back and forth to lock and unlock the front hubs. Very, very simple. And then the switch comes out over here by the spring. So you have to get your old shift actuator out. The way to do that, first I unscrewed the switch, which is right here. Then I tried to unscrew this, which was stupid because I broke the housing. And I realized there are three E-clips. And then once you pull the all, all three E-clips out, the center shaft pulls right out this side, and then you have your fork nice and loose. So let's do that. Now what we have to do is route our cable through our new housing, through our shift fork. We have to put our nut on the cable first, and then we have to put E-clips to hold the shift fork into the cable. So the thing can move back and forth like this. Installed, it'll sit like that. Before you route the cable in, you gotta make sure you put your adjustment nut on the cable. Now, we gotta root cable and shift fork. Remember, the offset in the shift fork goes like this in the housing, so it can move back and forth. There's two E-clips, there's a third E-clip. All right, I put this all together. It's much easier to work on this outside from under the car. It's on a cable, so don't even bother working on it down there. I put all three E-clips in. They came with the kit, new ones. Now this is in the right position. To get it in the right position, I did rotate this housing, and at the same time, I cycled this. So if you watch, that's engaged, disengaged. So that's hub locked, hub unlocked. You just have to make sure that you're not bottoming it out at all, anywhere inside this mechanism. And once you know you're not bottoming it out, you go ahead and tighten down your jam nut right here so you know you're adjusted right. One take, piece of cake. Okay, installation's complete. Now to test it, we'll just turn the key to on and we'll engage our front hub. Wow! Works like a champ. So there are a couple steps I did off camera. Don't forget to do those. Make sure you put your grommet where the cable goes through the firewall. You don't want that to get eaten up. And don't forget to reconnect your vent line underneath. There we go, finished product. So we have our cable. Our routing for the cable is really not probably ideal, but it works and it keeps away from everything that it might get snagged on or caught on, which is really what my main goal was. And here's our actual actuator with switch and our electrical and our vent line. So just make sure you put them on, but everything's tight, good to go, seems to work well. Also, here's the finished product inside the cab. This way everybody can see how that turned out. Pretty clean. I'm very happy with this type of setup. Doesn't have to pull very far to actuate and to lock and unlock. It's nice. We jumped right into doing our thermostat. So we ended up draining about a gallon of antifreeze out of the bottom of the radiator. And uh, pro tip, I like to save old radiator hoses. A lot of the time I use them for insulation, for cables or, or smaller hoses. This time, I just went ahead and held this thing against the pet cock <laughs> like that and let it drain into a bucket instead of making a big mess. It worked out great. So uh, I'd recommend that. Anyhow, here is our hose disconnected. There's our thermostat. We're just gonna clean that all up and pop a new one in. All right, we took our thermostat out. We've got our housing off. We've cleaned up both our gasket surfaces with wire brushes. We're gonna put this back together. And the, basically your thermostat sits inside this housing. So you put your thermostat in, you make sure you put your, uh, your water pump and thermostat, Permatex all over both sides of the gasket. Put your gasket onto here, and then you put the entire assembly in. I fixed the exhaust gasket leak. I just quadrupled up the gasket. If one kind of fixes it, four should do great, and it did. And now I feel like a coffee and some donuts. Who's in? 
This is what I meant by coffee and donuts. I hope everybody enjoyed watching that film as much as I enjoyed making it. I know one thing's for sure, it's 27 degrees outside. I myself am about to partake in my own film and enjoy watching it. I'm gonna be in your position. I can't wait, I'm looking forward to it. Next film, filming starts tomorrow. We're gonna get to work on that 66 Mustang timing chain cover gasket. Stay tuned.